Hello, I just wanted to show you a little bit about these wiper motors and why they can be so important. Um, you can actually use the wires that come out of the back of the motor unit as a synchro to tell you how many turns the motor actually has done. And how we can do that is if we remove the back cover, then it will expose the inner workings here. And as you can see, there's two contacts here. And those two contacts, if you'll notice here, on our motor, you will see a couple of interesting areas on the motor. You'll notice this metal disc, and you'll also notice this flat space right here. Those two points correspond here. This would be your outer metal disc, which you can see here. And this inner one is going to rotate around on this inner circle where this plastic place is here is where it will break continuity. So if you use this as your positive going across here, as this rotates, it's going to break continuity for a second every time that this rotates. So you actually have, a mag you ha actually have contacts to make a switch plate right here in the motor itself. And I'll show you a little bit on how to do that and how to make a digital counter with this using a calculator. So I've reinstalled our screws on the back cover. The only two wires that we need to worry about are these two. However, we need to disconnect this wire to use it if we're going to use this as a counter so that this doesn't interfere with the workings of our motor. And these two wires here will be the power inlet for our motor. So I can go ahead and go ahead and cut this wire and that will make it so that we can use this section of the motor for our counter. So all we have to do is just clip this wire off here and here. And then all we have to do is wrap this with some electrical tape here and here and we're good to go. So our next step in making our counter so that we can tell how many times that we've made a turn, then we have our little calculator. I've removed all the buttons except for the ones that I'm going to need and that is the on-off, the one button, the plus button, and the equals button. Now that I've got that, I can show you how that, that works. So if you use your calculator and you go one plus one and hit the equal sign, you'll see that changes to a two and a three, four, five, six, etc. Now, you'll notice that I have two wires right out the back. Those two wires go through a hole into the interior of the calculator onto the back of the circuit board. And on the back of the circuit board there's going to be two contacts for this equals button. On the circuit board there's a green coating. That's an anti-solder coating. And you'll have to buff through that anti-solder coating with a piece of Scotch-Brite. And I use Scotch-Brite instead of sandpaper so that I don't uh, sand through the copper coating that's on the board and that's the copper contact you're going to solder to. Now, on the back of the board, you're going to solder two wires to each contact of where the equals button would normally sit. Now that you have your two wires coming out, it's just like if you push your equals button every time. So now that we're zeroed out, and we push a 1, our plus button, and a 1, and every time that we connect our two wires here, you'll notice that we will change our number here to a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, every time I touch these contacts together. Now all we have to do is wire the contacts from our motor to the contacts on our calculator, and every time that the motor changes on its contacts, it will engage our counter on our calculator. Now the one step that you do have to add is you do have to add a little set switch in between one of the contacts. And that's due to the fact of the way that the contacts are built in here so that you can reset your calculator when you need to reset your timing. And that will help to do that. And then you just have an on and an off position and one will be in the off position on the switch will make it so that you can program your calculator and when you turn it on it will engage the motor counter. So that's the only step that you'll do. I'm going to wire that all up and then I'll show you how that works with the motor running. So I've got everything wired up now. I've got our switch in place. I've got our temporary wiring hooked up just so that I can show you how it works. 
And as you can see, I've ran it once so that it's two. And when I apply the power, you'll notice that every time the motor revolves one turn, our counter will change. Now, this right here, the calculator, costs about 50 cents from the dollar store. Our switch, maybe two cents. So for 52 cents, we have an actual turns counter for our motor that works really quite well. The only thing we have to do is worry about one plus one equals and rotate our motor. And everything else is ready to go for you and it's set up. It takes maybe about 15 minutes to wire this all up and to get set for your motor controller. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this little video. I wanted to do this for a couple of people that uh, were asking if there was a cheaper way to do it. And definitely there's always a way to make something happen if you just utilize what's around you. So I hope you've enjoyed that little part of the video, a little step away from uh, designing up the coil. But uh, I wanted to show this really quick so that everybody could see how to implement that onto the motor winder and uh, for winding your coils. In case you know that you need 500 turns, as you go you can create your 500 turns. So it'll just keep counting up for every single turn that it does. It's very, very accurate because of the workings inside the motor. And uh, it creates a very, very stable counting system. And I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much.